Hello, World Wide Webbers. We're going to take a look at the 5001 Launch Sea Reader in all its entirety. Uh, it is a battery tester, uh, starting and charging system tester, uh, as well as a decent little scan tool. Um, so we're going to take a look at the battery side first. Uh, so from your main menu, BTS, battery test. We are going to do a health test. It's currently resetting. So when you hook up to the battery, always positive cable first, then the negative cable. When you disconnect, negative first, then positive. Most of the time it doesn't matter, um, but when the battery blows up because it's leaking hydrogen, it'll matter. Uh, turn off everything. Everything is off. Uh, tells me I got floating voltage. This is an AGM battery. If you don't know, uh, it should be labeled on top. If it's not, Google the part number and just see. Uh, gel cell is like your Optima, those type batteries, or an aircraft battery. Uh, so this one is an AGM. If you've got a stop-start system, whether you want it or not, it's probably an AGM battery. Uh, it wants it in CCAs, um, or at least in North America here. And then it's going to ask, what does it say on the top of the battery? Not what you thought it was. Mine says 800. I just looked. Next. Battery test in progress. Says uh, it's pretty much happy for the most part. 50-ish percent. It's in the green. It's an almost two-year-old vehicle. I'll go with that. So I'm going to click on next test. I'm going to do a starting test. Upon turning the engine off, select next. Yeah, it's already off. Initializing. Start the car engine. Hey, it's a Ford and it started. Okay. It says we're normal. Next test. Upon starting the engine, select next. I think we started it. So this, it doesn't tell you to immediately, but before you would have clicked next into this charging test, I probably would turn all the loads on. Uh, and then you're also going to need assistant. I don't have one with me right now, but we're going to go through it. You're going to want to rev the engine to 2500. So at idle with all loads on, which I don't have all of them, but quite a bit. AC's blasting, headlights are on, heated seats and that nature are not on. Uh, and it does show me a little low. I'm 13.4, but it, it, it thinks it's a little low. At 2500 RPM, I'm sure I'm in the 14 volts. So from there, you can click report. Gives you a pretty neat little deal. You click share. In the book button on this menu here, it will save any diagnostic recordings, uh, any reports. See, these are scans I did, not battery reports, I believe. Uh, let's go back to battery. Yes, so within that menu, there's my battery reports. That's how you can share, you can review them. Uh, I'll show later what those reports look like. They're actually pretty cool. Uh, you do need to make sure that you're online. This does not auto reconnect. So whatever is saved, you gotta go back in there, uh, hit it again. Uh, pretty cool. So that's the battery test, starting and charging system test. Um, for what I paid for this thing, amazing. Like for years, Medtronics was the name of the game for. Fifteen, two thousand dollars something like that, something crazy. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, we'll move on to a scan test. Okay, so that was the battery test. Now we're going to get our OBD cable and plug it in there. Screw the little screwies and we'll go do a scan. System scan, very simple. Plug it into diagnose, auto detect. Anything newer than 20, 2008 should pull the VIN, no issue. There's a few weird models, 
like a 12 or 13 Jeep Patriot where FCA just, I don't know, felt like being FCA. 17 RX, that's our vehicle. Sixteen pin DLC Europe and other. I don't know that they use that in Europe, but okay. I do have radar cruise, so we're gonna select that. Okay. Fun, boring fact: the sixteen-pin OBD2 connector, I believe, is known as the J1962 in the SAE world of the federal government. Started in 96 for an emissions push. However, it standardized everything and made it easier on our end. You don't have multiple connectors anymore for the most part. There was a while there you still had to use a specific connector for certain modules. Alright, it's going through. It will not scan every module. Um, it does six. Um, gives you a real nice printout. Uh, this information is your shop information that you put on the tool. Um, and, and when you share it, you can email it to whoever from the tool as long as you're on Wi-Fi. I just send it to my, uh, to my email and then I'll show you on the PC later. Um, it gives a really neat, uh, just a URL. Uh, that you can click, you can share, it's not password protected, and uh, this is also saved, by the way. Any of your uh, diagnostic stuff is saved under this book tab. Um, so let's go back to where we were. So we can select engine. Let's do a little data streaming. My screenshot button's in the way, we'll drag that down. You go to settings to turn on the screenshot button, if that's your pleasure. I like to be able to screenshot whenever I want. Um, so this is gonna pull up a list of 300 something PIDs that you can data stream. I am going to select, I don't know, a couple. Uh, you're bored watching me scroll. My apologies. All right, so now we're looking at live data. It's my APP, I'm revving it changes so we're data streaming one thing that's cool you can click combine and then you can pick these PIDs uh, to view so the more PIDs you have the slower it's gonna view it's already pretty slow um, I would probably use this screen mainly uh, if I did a cooling system repair I'm gonna go on a road test um, or even just my warm-up cycle. I like to graph the ECT, uh, see my thermostat pop, um, and then see the fan cycle on, see your drop, and then when you go on a road test, see that airflow reflects uh, your ECT. Um, I'm boring you again. But anyway, I will, uh, that's pretty cool. So, I mean, you can screenshot whatever. We go to the book, images, and then there's all the screenshots I have saved, um, as well as any diagnostic reports I have saved, any scans. Um, you know, there's one from the Ford the other day. It's all right there. Um, when you share it, same thing when you, when you share, um, as well as images. You can share images to your email. It'll give you a URL for that as well. Um, anyway, let's get to the PC. Okay, we're at the PC. Uh, what we're looking at here is the scan report. Uh, pretty straightforward, nice looking report. If there was codes, it would say right here, you drop down and show how many, all that stuff. Um, so same with screenshots. Um, it's literally just a link out of an email and then, and then boom. Uh, one thing I didn't uh, outline or do a tutorial on is the reset features of this thing, um, which is worth its weight, that in itself. Uh, being able to do battery registration on a vehicle um, or, or a brake bleed, I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, 
So is this thing going to replace your fully functional scan tool to a Diag Tech? Uh, no. Uh, but it's a nice supplement. You know, everyone's always fighting for tooling in a shop. Um, this is perfect for that uh, C-Tech or general service, quick service guy or girl, whatever you want to call them, that are, uh, you know, looking to get into something more tool-wise um, or someone just wanting to do some side jobs. Uh, that, that's phenomenal. I spoke of my $400 ECM only code reader. That was $400 back in probably 2007 ish. Um, still works, but you know, this is like half the price almost. Um, and it has a battery tester on it, a legit battery tester. You know, for years it was, you need a Medtronics, you know. Um, I've seen a Medtronics as cheap as 800 bucks, as much as two grand. Um, this does the same thing that does, you know. So I highly recommend it. It's it's a great tool. It's a great price. Launch makes a great product. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with it so far. And if anything changes, I'll let you all know. Thank you and have a blessed one.